Alhamdulillahil <tuh> ربنا يسر ولا تعسر وتمم بالخير وبك نستعين يا فتاة سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ونوحا إذ نادى من قبل فاستجبنا له فنجيناه وأهله من الكرب العظيم ونسرناه من القوم الذين كذبوا بآياتنا إنهم كانوا قوم سوء فأقرقناهم أجمعين وداود وسليمان إذ يحكمان في الحرب إذ نفشت فيه غنم القوم وكنا لحكمهم شاهدين ففهمنا سليمان وكلا آتينا حكما وعلما وسخرنا مع داود الجبال يسبحنا والطير وكنا فاعلين وعلمناه صنعة لبوس لكم لتحسنكم من بأسكم فهل أنتم شاكرون ولسليمان الريح عاصفة تجري بأمره إلى الأرض إلى الأرض التي باركنا فيها وكنا بكل شيء عالمين ومن الشياطين من يغوسون له ويعملون عملا دون ذلك وكنا لهم حافظين وأيوب إذ نادى ربه أني مسني الدر وأنت أرحم الراحمين فاستجبنا له وكشفنا ما به من در وآتيناه أهله ومثلهم معهم رحمة من عندنا رحمة من عندنا وذكرى للعابدين First of all, we give our praise and our thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the favors and bounties Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed on us. When we send salat and salam on his last and final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to continue with the tafsir of Surah Al-Anbiya, finally on verse 76, <clears throat> dealing with some of the prophets so far we dealt with prophet musa alayhi salam prophet harun alayhi salam we dealt with prophet ibrahim ishaq yaqub prophet lut and now we're on to prophet nuh alayhi salam 
And in this surah, only two ayats, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses to speak about Prophet Nuh alayhi salam, which is verse 7 to 6 and verse 7 to 7. So the mention of Prophet Nuh alayhi salam here is very, very brief, very short. There's no kind of story about Prophet Nuh alayhi salam. But there is a surah which is named after Prophet Nuh alayhi salam. So you have the chapter of Nuh, Surah to Nuh, <coughs> which is found in the 29th Juz, that is the Juz just before the last Juz. And in that Surah, the entire Surah is dealing with Prophet Nuh, salam. not a long Surah, but yet many ayats dealing only with Prophet Nuh. Salam. So here we see we had started this verse in our last session, Allah says, No had is nadam in qabr. That no alayhi salam, he cried out to us from before. He cried out to us. That is, he raised his hands and was making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help. And min qabr, the word min qabr there, from before, reference, uh, he was before all the prophets we just mentioned there. That is, he was before Ibrahim, he was before Musa, he was before Harun, he was before Prophet Lut. So all that we mentioned just now, the prophets that we did already, he was before all of them. He was one of the earliest prophets. So Allah says, very, very long before even all those prophets we just mentioned, there was a prophet by the name of Prophet Nu alayhi salam. And what he did was, if nada, he called. Nada refers to raising your hands and begging from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he begged Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help. And as we mentioned, he preached for 950 years. Generations after generations would come hoping, hoping that if this generation do not accept my message, the next generation will accept it. But they had things in place. The people had put things in place so much so that they would train the young ones with the idol worshiping. So even after they died, and wise prophets, Noah alayhi salam, is hoping that the next generation is going to accept the message, <clears throat> they have already trained them to, uh, to follow idol worshiping. So then he would hope again for the next generation, but those people had it in place that they would keep their people on the path of misguidance, on the path of idol worshiping. And he kept on like he kept on like this, seeing generations after generations passing away. People are dying, people are mourning, and he's there. <clears throat> and after 950 years. So nine, after 950 years of worrying, 950 years of hardship with his people, because they give him a lot of horrors. They would laugh at him, they would mock at him, they would ridicule him, and he had to live with that for 950 years. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he only preached for 23 years. Think of that, 23 years, Prophet Noah, at least, 950 years. And many times the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would sit down there and after the treatment he would get from his people, here Allah is letting him know, look, a Prophet 950 years. And only after 950 years, then he made to and said, oh Allah, this is it. In the next ayat, Allah says, I am he said, Oh Allah, Anni Maglub, I am overpowered by my people. They have defeated me because I've tried every single thing. As you can see, I've tried every trick in the book. Fanta, sir, so Allah help me. Surah No, Allah says, Waqala no hurrabi la tadar aral ardi min al kafiri na da yara. No, alayhi salam says, My Lord, do not leave any unbelievers on the face of the earth. Wipe them out. Try all of them. Do not sorry for any one of them. 
Do not sorry for any one of them. Even the children who are following their parents at that time and who learn to what their parents, this dua was also included for them as well. La tabar, do not save even the children of the unbelievers because the unbelievers has already embedded that training of idol worship into them. It says, because if you only sorry for any one of them, you have sympathy, you have mercy on any one of them, they are going to bring about a new generation of unbelievers. <clears throat> Prophet Noah, alayhi salam, Allah says in this surah, Allah says, we answered his door for him. And we know how Allah answered his dua. Allah caused that great flood to destroy all of them. When he made his dua, it is only after he made his dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to build the ark. It is not that he was building the ark and then made his dua. He made his dua asking Allah to destroy them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to build the ark. Now, building such a huge act would have taken a very long time to do. So his answer didn't come immediately, but Allah says, Pastor Jabalala, who he answered him, told him to start to build an ark. And as he was building the ark, he was being tormented even more. But yet he knows that I've already made dua against them, and the prophets' duas are accepted. And this is why most of the all the prophets would always make dua for their people. It is only when they cannot handle it again, then they will make dua against their people. So he took 950 years before he made a dua against his people. And when you make a dua against the people, that is when Allah sends the other. Similarly, when the Prophet وسلم, was being persecuted in toil. Jibreel alayhi salam came. If the Prophet sallallahu had only accepted that, that would have been considered as a dua against his people. But the Prophet sallallahu did not accept that. And the Prophet sallallahu have never in his whole life made a dua against his people. He has always made dua for his people. Always beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect and to save his people, to grant them he died. So Allah says, Fasta who we save him. Fanajainahu. We answered his dua, Fanajainahu, and we save him and his ahl. <clears throat> we save him and his people. The word ahl also means his family. We save him and his family. Now, we know Prophet Noah alayhi salam, he had <clears throat> more than one son. However, the Quran has not mentioned the names of his children. The Quran has only mentioned about one of his sons. Because there was one son who was following his mother. His mother, which is the wife of Prophet Noah alayhi salam, was an unbeliever. And from all his children, all his children was following him, except that one son. As you see, one son attached to the mother, mother's boy. <clears throat> he was so close to his mother, so he was to the belief of his mother. <clears throat> so the two of them were killed. But yet we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we save him and his family. He saved him and his family. And we know not all of his family was saved. <clears throat> when the flood water started to come, Prophet Noah alayhi salam, in the ark, the ark is about to seal. Water started to rise. <clears throat> Prophet Noah alayhi salam, he saw his son. This is our one son only. And as a father, Definitely, he wanted his son to be saved as well. So he said to his son, Oh, my son, come on the ark. You will be saved if you come. No one is going to be saved today. Come on the ark. 
and the sun said to the father, Awi ila Jabalin, ya simuni min al -ma. Says, I am going to take a refuge on that mountain. So he started to climb the mountain to reach on top of the mountain. Says, I'm going to go to the top of the mountain. Ya simuni min al -ma. It is going to save me from the water. But even the highest mountain I was there, everything was covered with water. According to, to Islam, and according to the Quran, the flood was not a worldwide flood. It was not a flood that took over the whole earth. It was such a flood that took the villages and the communities connected to Prophet Nuh It was a great flood, but it's not a universal flood or a worldwide flood. And this is where the Quran differs from the Bible because the Bible claims that it was a worldwide flood. The whole earth was flooded, but the whole earth wasn't flooded. <clears throat> so the water came and Prophet Noah salam, saw his son drunk. As a father seeing your son drunk, having one of your child die right in front of your eyes, it's a very sad situation. BTV is believer, is unbeliever. Seeing your son perish right in front of your eyes. It was very hard for him. And as well, Allah tells us in the Quran that no alayhi salam, he said in another part of the Quran, said no alayhi salam, he said, Oh Allah, you have promised that you would have protect my family, as Allah says in this in this ayah. We save him and his family. So Noah alayhi salam is saying to Allah, oh Allah, you said that you're going to save me and my family. And certainly my son is from my family. So how it is that he died? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, your son, laysa min ahlik. Your son is not your family. Your son is not your family. This is what Allah responds to him. Allah says, don't ask me. But what you do not know, your son is not your family. Your family is those who believe. Those are your family. If he dies uh, and he is taking the part as the unbeliever, even though he's blood, it's not considered to be your family because you can't ever make do of him. You can't ever ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to... <laughs> To grant him paradise. You can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save him from the fire of Jahannam. So how could he be your son? He's not your son. <clears throat> so when Allah says we save him and his ahl, his family, refer to those who believe. All the believers. Family as well as non-family. Allah saved them. Min al karabil adim. Allah says, we have saved him from Karbil Azim, which is a great disaster, which is known as the flood. And uh, the ark is sealed until it stopped on Mount Jude, as Allah tells us in the Quran as well. Again, these are different parts that you're going to find different places of the Quran. In this, <clears throat> in this surah, only two ayahs, even though the surah is named Surah al -Ambiya, and you would have expected a larger portion of each of the prophets to be mentioned in. Sometimes it's just a phrase, sometimes one ayat, sometimes two ayats about that prophet. So you move on to the next, next verse, which is verse 77, which is the last verse dealing with Prophet Nuh alayhi salam. Allah says, Wana sarnahu min al ladina kathabu bi ayatina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we saved him or we supported him against the people who rejected our signs. Allah says, they were an evil people, so we drowned them all. So here, Allah says, we helped him. For 950 years, Allah protected him. Allah was protecting him because he there preaching, majority of the people unbelievers, definitely they were of someone 
or the other would have had him, they thought to kind of hurt him, kill him. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after 13 years, they decided it's time to get rid of him. And he had to migrate from Makkah to Medina. So think about 950 years. No one of the unbelievers didn't have that or you know what, let us get rid of him. Because Allah says, Wana Saruna, who we helped him. We supported him. So even though he was the minority for 950 years, because when he went on that act, there was only eight to something people with him. Eight to something people with him after 950 years. <clears throat> so Allah says, the support he had was from us. Allah supported him. Allah helped him. Allah removed that thought in our minds. Even though they disliked him, they hated him, they mocked him, they did all things. Allah removed that thought of wanting to get rid of him or to kill him. And then when he, only when he made dua against them, that is when Allah sent his adab and Allah protected the believers and Prophet Nuh alayhi so Allah says, <laughs> We helped him. We helped him against the people who denied our ayats. So all the generations of people, Allah helped him against. And Allah says, They were and they were evil people. So Allah is telling us how bad these people were. They were not innocent people. They were evil people. But Allah says, ajma'in," And because of that, we drunk all of them. And this was the answer to Prophet Nuh alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He helped him and Allah protected him. <laughs> so we have completed the two ayats with Prophet Nuh alayhi salam. We move on now. From verse 7 to 9 <clears throat> until verse 82. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about two other prophets. That is Prophet Dawood alayhi salam and Prophet Sulaiman alayhi salam. And again, the stories are all throughout the Quran. But here, Allah tells us of an incident, one of the incidents that took place. But this incident is connected to both of them. And this is why Allah has joined the names of these two prophets. Because the incident is related back to both of them. Now, Prophet Dawood alayhi salam, who was the father. So Dawood is the father and Sulaiman is the son. In in the biblical version, you have David. So David, and then you have Solomon. But in Arabic, we say Dawood, and we say Sulaiman, the two prophets. Now, Prophet Dawood is considered to be one of the famous prophets because from amongst the prophets, he was one of them that were given a kitab, a book. Not all were given books. So we had Prophet Dawood alayhi salam given the Zabur. You have Prophet Musa alayhi salam given the Torah. You have Prophet Jesus alayhi salam given the Injil. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam given the Quran. So those are the four main books. Besides them, different prophets were given different scripts, not a complete book. So you have like Ibrahim alayhi salam was given some suhofs. Prophet Sheath alayhi salam was given some suhofs. Suhofs are very small books, as you can see. A few papers together. So it would not consider to be a complete book as the Zabur, the Torah, the Injil, and the Quran. <clears throat> Prophet Dawood, as I said, he is mentioned as well 16 times in the Quran. So 16 times you're going to see the name Dawood alayhi salam comes up. The incident of Dawood alayhi salam becoming a king, which is mentioned in Surah Baqarah, which we did very, very long time now. 
And Allah says, وَقَتَلَ دَاوُودُ جَالُوتَ When Dawood killed Jalut. We hear the story of David and Goliath. Same thing, Dawood and Jalut. After one day he became the king. He is one of the few prophets that were given the privilege of being a king and a prophet. Majority of the prophets would have been during different times of different kings. But he was one of them, as well as his son, as you're going to see Prophet Suleiman as well. They were given that opportunity to be both king and prophet. And imagine to be king and prophet, you have all the authority. If you're only a prophet and you have kings and the kings are unbelievers, then definitely you're going to have a very hard time with them. But imagine you're the king as well as you're the Nabi, so you could put forward, you know what, these are the rules that we're governing by. So it was, as you can say, it was easier for Prophet Dawood as well as Prophet Sulaiman. The amount of persecution and hardship the other prophets went through, these two didn't really have to go through that because they were kings. And we're going to say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had subjected <laughs> a lot of things to these two prophets. We have Prophet Sulaiman after Prophet Dawood salam passed away. Prophet Sulaiman inherited the kingdom. And one of the things that Prophet Sulaiman did different from all the other prophets was he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him such so much wealth that he has never given no one else on the face of the earth. A prophet asking Allah for wealth, asking Allah for kingship, make me such a king that no one else could be compared to that in the entire world. And from after that, a prophet's dua is accepted. So if he make dua for that, Allah granted it to him. And from since that time until the day of judgment, there are not going to be any king greater than Sulaiman because of that dua that he made to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are many stories of Sulaiman in the Quran we have in Surah Namal. There was the, the story or the incident with him and the ant when he was with his army and he could have understand the speeches or the language of the animals and the ants were saying, Sulaiman and his army is coming, they're going to trample on us. Let us hide from them. Let us go in a different direction. And he heard and he smiled and he made a dua and thank Allah for giving him that understanding that he's able to speak to animals. Also, we have the, the story of Hudhud and the Queen of Sheba <clears throat> that is mentioned as well. That is also in another surah. I think it's right in Surah Namal that is mentioned as well. So again, we have his story spread out as well. So we had both of them, Prophet Sulaiman as well as Prophet Dawood alayhi salam. We're going to see some of their powers that Allah had granted to them. Right in this surah, Allah is going to mention a few things that he had given to them. We know Prophet Sulaiman, when he passed away, he died standing. He died standing, leaning on his staff. Some say the power that, that he got was from the staff. And as well as a ring, as when you check in Surah Bakura, you're going to see that there was a chest with a ring and a staff. <clears throat> and this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had granted him powers through those things. So he died was leaning on that staff. And nobody knew that he died. Even the jinns. So we're going to see that he had control over animals, he had control over the chains, he had control over the wind. That is how powerful Prophet Sulaiman was. Yeah. <laughs> it was only after the insect kept on eating on his staff and 
it was able to break and he fell down and he died. And then everyone realized that he had passed away for some time. So that is Dawood and Suleiman. So we're going to see the incident now that took place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. For 78, for those on the Zoom, for 78 kind of missing on the slide. So 78, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَدَاوُودَ وَسُلَيْمَانَ إِذْ يَحْكُمَانِ فِي الْحَرْفِ إِذْ نَفَشَتْ فِيهِ قَرَمَ الْقَوْمُ وَكُنَّا لِحُكْمِهِمْ شَاهِدِينَ Allah says, and Dawood and Sulaiman, when both of them gave a judgment concerning a field. Again, both of them gave a judgment concerning a field wherein <clears throat> the grazing of the sheep of a people. وَكُنَّا لِحُكْمِهِمْ شَاهِدًا Allah says, we were witnessing both of their judgments. We were witnessing the judgment that was taken up by both Dawood and Sulaiman. So here Allah is telling us that there was a case and Dawood alayhi salam placed judgment on that as well as Prophet Sulaiman alayhi salam placed judgment and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was witnessing when this was happening. So we see one is the word heart. In the ayat when Allah says in fil harufi in the field refer to clusters of graves were hanging. So there was such a, a field, an individual, he had owned a field that had a lot of graves, clusters of graves. The word nafashat, some word nafash, which means to graze, but not only to graze, it means to graze at night. Again, it means to graze at night. Was the word hamal, refers to grazing during the day. See, if an animal is grazing in the day, use the word hamal. If the animal is grazing at night, use the word nafash. So what Allah tells us is that this grazing of the animal took, took part during the night. Of course, sorry, during the night. So the animal went and grazed during the night. So the owner of the animal is asleep. The owner of the field is asleep. And this animal now, this sheep, they went and they started to eat up the grapes of this man, this man's field. So this was the incident. <clears throat> so now, in the morning when the owner of the field of the grapes, he realized, you know what, all my crops is destroyed. He came to Prophet Dawood alayhi salam and said, you know what, last night this man, all of his sheep came over and damaged all my crops. So all my wealth has gone. I've invested a lot and everything is gone because of this man's animal. <clears throat> so Prophet Dawood alayhi salam, he gave a judgment. And his judgment <clears throat> was... The owner of the sheep should give all the sheep to the owner of the field. Again, the owner of the sheep should give all of his sheep to the owner of the field where all his crops were destroyed. Was Islamically, this is correct. It is mentioned because according to the commentators, the value of the grapes was the same value of the sheep. Again, the value of the amount of crops that were destroyed was the same amount of value for the sheep. So if this man, his sheep, destroyed all his man crop, in recompense, he takes the sheep. <clears throat> so this was Prophet Dawood alayhi salam's <clears throat> judgment on it. And it is correct, as I mentioned, because both our prophets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, would have granted both of them the hikmah and ilm 
both wisdom as well as knowledge. For as they were leaving, <coughs> Prophet Sulaiman salam asked him, what was the ruling? His father just gave a ruling inside him. The two of them came out, Prophet Sulaiman, they asked, what is the ruling? They explained to him what the ruling was. He said, if I had to judge, I would have given you a better judgment than that, a better ruling. So they went now, when they heard that, because definitely the owner of the sheep definitely wouldn't be satisfied. <clears throat> because all my sheep is going to go to the owner of the field. So when he heard that now, he said, let us go back to the old and Isa. They went back to the old and said, you know what, Prophet Suleiman, he's saying that he have a different ruling, if he had to give this ruling. Now, in such a case, the first person that gave that ruling would feel offended. If you give a ruling and somebody is saying, no, I have a better ruling than that, you would have feel offended, even if, 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 if it is your own son. And here we have seen Prophet Ibrahim when he, he was just a little child, a teenager, and he was correcting his father. Here we see now Prophet Sulaiman he is saying, oh, I know better than my father. I can give you a better judgment than my father. <clears throat> so whilst with age, you might have more experience, it does not mean that you have more ilm and more knowledge. Because age brings experience. You have witnessed a lot more things than those who are young. But it does not mean that you know more than those who are young. So that's just one, one thing to, to keep note of. So Dawood Ali Salam, even though naturally you would feel offended, he was not offended. And this would happen when you want the truth. And you want what is best. If your intention is like that, your intention is, I want what is best for both parties. So even though I've given a judgment, if I know that there's a better judgment, I would like to hear about it as well. So call Prophet Sulaiman alayhi salam. At that time, Prophet Sulaiman is not a prophet as yet. <clears throat> because at that time, only Dawood alayhi salam was prophet. And then afterwards, then he became prophet. The prophet <coughs> Suleiman says, what I would do in my judgment of this is that I would give the, <coughs> the field, the same damaged field, I will give it to the owner of the sheep for a period of time to take care of that field. Your animal destroy the crops. So the crops have been damaged. You need to replace that. So you're the owner of the sheep. You should go in the field and take care of the crops. And whilst you are taking care of those crops, your animals will go to the owner of the field so that he could get benefit from your animals. He can milk it and get benefit from the animal. When the crops are fully grown, you give back the owner of the field his crop and you take back your animals, which is even more just. So whilst Prophet Dawood alayhi salam was just, Dawood alayhi Sulaiman alayhi salam had a better judgment. <coughs> and this is why in verse 7 to 9, Allah says, فَفَحَمْنَاهَا Sulaiman," And so we made Sulaiman understand it. We grant him a better understanding of the situation that he was able to judge better than even his own father. <clears throat> and Allah says, and we had given each one of them, we had given hukman wa ilman. We had given the knowledge, we have given wisdom as well as knowledge. So he did not say he only gave Sulaiman wisdom and knowledge. He said that given it to both of them, Dawood as well as Sulaiman. <laughs> they mentioned that he has been more aware. He was made a judge. 
And when he was made a judge, once Hassan al Basri came to visit him. <clears throat> and when Hassan al Basri came to visit him, he saw Iyas crying. He has just gotten that position of being a judge. And as Hassan al Basri Rahmatullah saw him, he saw that he was crying. So he says, Ma Yubiki, what, what has made you cry? Says Balagni and Al Qudat, because of some information that I've heard. He says that information is I have heard people saying that the judge, when you are a judge, and you give a verdict and you make a mistake, you're going to go to the fire. I'm hearing people saying this that if I'm a judge and I give a verdict and that verdict is incorrect. I'm going to be thrown into the fire of Jahannam. As well as if I give a judgment because of my nafs, because of my own desires, then I will, I'm going to be thrown into the fire. And if I give a judgment and it is correct, a verdict and it is correct, I'm going to get paradise. So he says, I'm thinking about it. This is a hard job to do. <clears throat> Because if I try my best and I'm making a mistake, I'm going to go to the fire of Jahannam. And then Hassan al-Basri, he says, what they're saying is wrong. What you have heard is wrong. Because when you look at the ayah that Allah speaks about Dawood and Sulaiman, they were judges, Dawood and Sulaiman. And whilst Sulaiman was the better of the two, he never reprimanded Dawood So while he praised Sulaiman, he never said, you know what, Dawood was wrong. Dawood is going to go to the fire. No. He tried his best. And because you put in that effort and you did not follow your desires, then you're not going to go to the fire for that. And then he says to him, there are three qualities that judge should have. So there's three qualities a judge should have. And then he had given three verses of the Quran to back up why he says a judge should have these three qualities. So the first quality, he says, <laughs> A judge should not sell out his verdicts for a small price. That is, you don't take bribes. You don't give verdicts based on getting money. That has a force. The second, wala yatabiu fihil hawa. Do not follow your desires when you're given a judgment. Follow what is the sharia. Do not follow what you feel like. The, the third, he says, wala yakshaw fi ahdan. Do not give a verdict because you fear someone. No, sometimes because of your fear of someone or because you fear the community or the society. You give a verdict in order to please them. It says, do not do that. So these are the three qualities of a judge. And the IIT used one, Ya Dawood, inna ja'alna ka khalifatan fil ard, fahkum bayna nas bil haq. When Allah says, O oh Dawood, we are making you a success on earth. You should judge between the people with the truth. Wala tatabiyul hawa. And do not follow your desires. And next ayat, Allah says, do not fear the people, but fear me. So in your verdict, do not fear anyone. And the Torah Allah says, Wala tashtaru bi ayati tamanan khalila. These are the three ayats. Do not sell out for a small price. <coughs> says all the prophets, they were ma'asumun. All the prophets, they were innocent. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped them. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he tells us in a hadith, he says, Ida ijtahad al-hakim fa asaba falahu ajaran. He says, when a, a hakim, a judge, makes an effort and he gives a sincere ruling, a sincere verdict, if it is correct, falahu ajaran. If it is correct, he's going to get two blessings, two ajar. He says, wa ida ijtahad fa akhtaa falahu ajaran. Says if he made a lot of effort, but still he gave a verdict and it was wrong. 
gave a verdict and it was wrong, he says, follow who actually he's still going to get a blessing for it because of his effort and he was sincere, but it had to be sincere. <clears throat> there's a it's also mentioned that there are three three judges. One for the Phil Jannah, a judge that is in Jannah, and for the Yani Finnar, and there are two judges in the fire. And it's explained, Rajarun Ali Malhaf wa Qadabihi Fahua Fil Jannah. A man who knows the truth and judges with the hap, he's in Jannah. Save when you're given verdicts, you're given judgment, you're using the Quran, you're using the Sharia, then you get Jannah because you're using that to pass the judgment. It says, A man who is given verdicts while he's ignorant, he has no qualification. He has no knowledge with regards to certain issues, but yet he is given verdict. He is in the fire. Because he's only going to cause more harm than good. Because he's not qualified to give such verdicts. And then he says, A man, he knows the truth, but yet he still opposes that. He still goes and give a verdict against the truth. So two judges in the fire, and one judge in Chan. So this was the, the incident that took place between Dawood and Sulaiman. So this is the incident mentioned in the Quran, but there are also other incidents that are mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet Abu Hur There's one where Abu Hurairah he says that there were Two women. <clears throat> and these two women, <clears throat> both of them have two infants. And whilst they were with these two infants, a wolf came and ate one of the infants. So they have two infants, each one of them have. And a wolf came and ate one of the infants. Now, both of them want the remaining infant. Both of them want to keep the remaining infant. So they go on to Prophet Dawood alayhi salam. And they say, you know what? Both of us had a child. And it so happened. This wolf came and ate one. So both of us want to, to be the guardian of this child. So what Prophet Dawood alayhi salam asks, which one of you is the oldest and whichever one was the oldest, he says, you will be responsible for the child. Now, again, that is just because if you give it to the oldest, the youngest can still make an next one. It is more impossible for an older one to make more than a younger one. So you could still maybe get married and get uh, an next child. <clears throat> so you give it to the oldest. Prophet Sulaiman he says, as the two of them was coming out, he said to them, bring me that child. That one child that they were fighting. Bring me that child. <clears throat> and he says, bring me a knife. <clears throat> I'll cut the child in half and give you half and you take half. <laughs> when the younger one heard that, she says, no, 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 don't do that. Give it to the older one. Prophet Sulaiman says, that child belongs to the younger one. Because only a real mother would feel like that for that child. <clears throat> so this was uh, the hikmah of Prophet Sulaiman. <clears throat> There's also another incident. Sometime, right? It's ten to. Yeah, we have some time. So you look at the the next incident. It is mentioned that there was this very beautiful woman in Bani Israel, and they had four leaders. 
or I can say four chiefs. And because this woman was very, very beautiful, they all proposed to her. All of them wanted to get married to her. And she refused all of them. Even though they were leaders and they were chief, they refused to get married to her. Now the four of them felt hurt because they are leaders and they send their proposal and they get rejected. <clears throat> so the four of them came together and <clears throat> they said, you know what? Let us slander her name. Let us say something bad about her that could maybe even get her stoned to death. So the four of them agreed to go to Dawud and be a witness. Remember, this is something false. Four of them are going together and be a witness that this woman was the owner of a dog and she starved that dog to death. She was so bad to the dog that she starved it to death. <clears throat> And we're going to see what judgment Dawood is going to give to this. <clears throat> so they went. After Prophet Dawood heard that, you know what, and four, not two witnesses, four witnesses. Because all four of them are not four drunky. They have four chiefs coming together. So as soon as he heard that and he got the witness, he believed that. There's no way of denying that you have witnesses. Yes, she did that. So he gave the order that she should be stoned. She should be stoned for doing that to that dog. <clears throat> In that same evening, Prophet Sulaiman, alayhi salam, he gathered two witnesses, two, yeah, two men to be witness. And he called the four chiefs and he put them down to sit there and he asked them again, are you sure that this woman had this dog and she starved it to death? All four of them bear witness, yes, this is what she did. All of them witnessed that. This is all right. <laughs> so told all four of them to go outside. And said, call one at a time. So you're going to question them individually to really find out if it's true or not. <laughs> so the first one came in. Look at how simple it was. First one came and he asked, what is the color of the dog? <laughs> What's the color of the dog? First one says, dog was red. Next one, so he did not allow them to reach up one another to talk about it. So as that one said red, he went his way, didn't allow them. Then he called in the next one, the next one said the dog was black. Call in the next one, next one say it was gray, a gray, grayish color dog. And then he called in the next one and says a white dog. So they all agree that we got to say that, you know what, this woman had this dog and she started to death, but they didn't think about which color the design was. <laughs> so Sulaiman alayhi salam, he gave the order, they should be killed. Because if they could do that to somebody innocent, then they also need a punishment. So when Dawud alayhi salam heard this, Dawud alayhi salam allowed that the four of them be killed. So again, we see Dawud alayhi salam making a decision. He's making a decision based on the facts that was in front of him, which as a judge, we use evidence. And as long as there's evidence, you just follow the rules and you give your verdict. And this is what Prophet Dawud alayhi salam was doing. Prophet Sulaiman, he had some special hikmah wisdom. And he was very good with, with regards to, to judgment. <clears throat> so Allah says, 
وسخرنا مع داوود الجبال ويسبحنا والطير وكنا فاعلين الله says we subjected the jibal we subjected the mountain to make tasbih with Dawood alayhi salam and we subjected the boards to make tasbih with Dawood alayhi salam wa kunna fa'ilin and we surely did or surely we did <clears throat> so here Allah says وَسَخَرْنَا مَعَ دَعُورَ الْجِبَالِ سَبِّحْنَا وَالْتَيْرِ So whenever the word يُسَبِّحْنَا literally means to do tasbih, to say subhanallah. But it is mentioned in reference to when Dawood alayhi salam would recite the Zabur. Because he was given the Zabur. You know, the Zabur is made up of proverbs. <clears throat> so when he would recite the Zabur will be so sweet. His voice, he, his voice was the sweetest voice. There's no, you can say there's no other human being was given a sweeter voice than Dawood Alex. And uh, the Jannatis are going to have the sweet voice as Dawood Alex. So when he would recite, he would be reciting the Zabur the when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says the word was stop in the ear and listen to Dawood alayhi salam and start to whistle. So even though the boys would whistle after hearing Dawood alayhi salam, they would stop and listen and start to whistle. And Allah says the Jibal, even the, the mountains, after hearing Dawood alayhi salam the mountains would start to echo, start to hear echoes from the mountain. <clears throat> so this was given to Dawood alayhi salam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, in my ummah, the one that have the most beautiful voice is from, uh, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu ta'ala alayhi That once the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he was walking and he heard a beautiful recitation. So when he heard this recitation, he went closer to see who it is reciting the Quran so sweet. Because he's the messenger of Allah and he knows song as nice as this individual. So he went up and as he saw it was Salat al Salat in the night. So he allowed to, to recite it loud. And realize it up is Abu Musa al Ashkari And he stood there and he listened and listened and listened to that recitation of Abu Musa al Ashkari. When Abu Musa al when Abu Musa al Ashkari completed, he said, the Prophet sallallahu went to him and said, You have been given similar to what Prophet Dawood was given. That is. The song, the voice, even though Dawood alayhi salam was the best, but from the best of the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari said, if I knew that you was listening to me, I would have tried to make it more sweet. <clears throat> because that was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam listening to the recitation. So we see we have <coughs> other things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given to Prophet Dawood alayhi salam. Allah says, وَعَلَّمْنَاهُ صَنَعَةَ لَبُوسِ لَكُمْ لِتُحْسِنَكُمْ مِنْ بَأْسِكُمْ فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ شَاكِرُونَ Allah says, and we taught in the making of shields for you to protect you from your violence. Are you then appreciative or are you thankful? So one of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had granted him the ability to do was to make armor to fight. So before the time of Dawood alayhi salam, there were no shield and no body armors. It was only during 
Prophet Dawood alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him the ability to melt the iron. Melting of the iron or using iron. Before that, iron was considered to be something too hard to, to do anything with. But Allah had granted Dawood alayhi salam the power, some of the opinion that with his own hands, Allah used to allow the iron just to, to be able to be flexible. And he would do it with his own hands. Others of the opinion, Allah had granted him that ability or that knowledge to use fire in order to get it soft, in order to mold different things. And one of the things that he introduced, as you can see, <coughs> he invents, as we like to use the word invent, one of the things that he had invented is the shield. Also, it is mentioned that he was also the first to put sheen on the armor. Right? You know, you had that sheen armor that you have the links. He was the one that invented that as well. So this was, as Allah tells us in another surah, Allah says, Wa allana lahul hadith. We make the hadith soft to him. Right? In surah hadir, Allah says, Wa allana lahul hadith. We made the hadith, the iron soft. This is why one of the opinions is that you would just take it with his hands and make it so. Right? So if you take it in the literal sense of the ayat, wa allana lahul hadith, we made the, the iron so for him. But others say, you know what? Even though Allah says we made it so for him, it means he granting that knowledge to know how to make it so. That is the usage of fire to get it so. <laughs> Allah says, li tuhsinakum min ba'sikum so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you from your distress or from fighting. Whenever you're fighting, you have some sort of protection, some sort of shield. You do not go just like that. So it is mentioned that when Dawood alayhi salam fought Goliath or Jalut, there were no shield. As you know, you just take that slingshot or that thing and that was it. There were no protective shield with no one of them. <clears throat> And so it was only from during the reign of Dawood alayhi salam that armors and shields were created or, as you can say, invented. So Allah says, Bahal antum shakirun. Are you not, aren't you shakirun? Aren't you grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Then from verse 81, Allah is going to tell us of some of the powers he had given to Prophet Sulaiman alayhi salam. So next week, inshallah, we're going to continue it from verse 81, which we're going to learn some of the special powers or special favors given to Prophet Sulaiman, inshallah. With that, we end for tonight. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdik. Nashiru wa la ilaha illa anta. Nastakbiruka wa natubi ilayk. Subhan rabbika rabbil izzati amma yisifun. Wassalamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillah rabbil alayhi. Assalamu alaykum.